We consider organic foods to be healthier because they're produced without synthetic pesticides and chemical fertilizers. However, organic farms are often less productive than conventional farms. Today we speak with Professor Suzanne Smith about science's role in improving the productivity on organic farms. Suzanne, is it true that organic farms are less productive than conventional farms? Well, Lee, it depends who you ask. So people who um, oppose organic farming probably say that, yes, they are less productive, whereas propon proponents of organic farms would say they are, can be just as productive as um, conventional farms. And I understand why, you know, we want to get rid of pesticides um, and organic farming is, is doing that, but what about chemical uh, fertilizers? Um, they're underground. What's, what's wrong with those? Yeah, that's a major difference between conventional and organic farming. And in fact, the you know, getting rid of pesticides and, and other agrochemicals is, is a big movement now in some countries, especially Europe, where people are you know, concerned about the effects of those chemicals on the health of people, that's also health of, of other organisms. And so that sort of goes beyond organic farms, but also includes conventional farms. But fertilizers are a big topic because they are maybe not directly impacting on human health, because as you say, they're underground, but they are impacting on the environmental health. So there have been big problems associated with fertilizer use that are really kind of now being discussed, and many countries have already change legislation and change practices because globally about only 50% of fertilizer is used by the crop. The other 50% are potential environmental hazards. From your experience, is the organic community open to innovation and in science? I think again it depends. So there, I know there's a lot of innovation going on in Europe for, where people are even breeding plants to perform well in organic farming systems because they are really quite a bit different the way that nutrients are supplied, the way the soil works. And so they are you know, covering this from all angles. I believe there's a lot more room to, for innovation in Australia. And again, because I'm, I'm a scientist, so I don't say organic farming is great and conventional farming is bad or vice versa, I would say all systems can, do, could, can be improved with scientific innovation. I mean, breeding plants specifically for these organic farms sounds fantastic, um, but what other things is your research doing to help with the problem? Well, we are particularly interested in, in sort of reinventing fertilizer, where we would take a mixture of materials. So we take conventional fertilizers because we will still need additional inputs in all instances, I believe, but also repurpose waste products. And this is agricultural waste that come from sugar mills, for example, or that could come from um, animal production. And to combine this with innovative materials that are... You know, so, so these are waste products? Yeah, these are waste products, but they have nutrients. So, in other words, imagine you take sugar cane to the mill, you squeeze all the sugar out of it, which is you know, chemically carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and then most of the nutrients that build the plant, so the, the proteins and, and you know, nitrogen, which is nitrogen mostly, um, phosphorus, potassium, all those things that are fertilizers, uh, remain with the mill. So, you know, a logical step would be to close this loop and say, well, these nutrients could be brought back to the farm and ideally providing other benefits to the crop and to the soil and to the farmer, of course, and, you know, do a full recycling. So this, you know, the notion of a circular economy is really gaining momentum, not just in this example of fertilizers that we just discussed, but for the wider society. So we don't want to create waste and landfills and pollution and, and you know, not use things that are still very useful. There's huge investment in medical science and uh, breakthroughs all the time. Uh, you know, do we need this sort of innovation in, in agricultural science and, and, and where's the money going to come from? Absolutely. I think that's been lamented by many organizations from the FAO to you know, local and, and national, international bodies because 
we really need to sort of think and use some of the technologies and, and you know new materials and other innovation to really drive agriculture forward. So plant breeding probably has received a lot of money. And also, you know, trying to optimize agricultural systems, so the whole agronomy. But agronomy, I suppose, is sort of kind of stuck a little bit because we have huge problems with soils that are degrading so that they have lost some of their function. And you know, people talk about declining soil fertility and it's a huge problem with hundreds of millions of hectares of land being you know, basically degrading, not being fit for food production anymore. And you know, sort of trying new ways of, of addressing this. And that has to come by manipulating and, and you know, relying on more science and new materials. So we have you know, access to a whole toolkit of cool stuff that people use for medicine and others. But we should be pushing this into agriculture. So, so now the tough question, uh, will organic farms be able to feed the world in the future? Well, I think you know, maybe in the future we'll have a, a hybrid system that will use all the goods from, or the best you know, practices and, and best materials from all of the systems that we have, and then we'll have you know, organic farming or you know, mixed with all the clever stuff that we already have in place and innovation to have sustainable, high quality food and also high yielding sort of systems that are an, you know, would enable us to feed our growing population. Uh, Suzanne, thanks very much for joining us on Science Over Coffee. Well, thank you, Lee, for this opportunity. Um, it was a real pleasure to be here this morning.